What's up, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Mental Health Matters with Marty. Listen, we are so glad that you have joined us. Listen, I got my brother's uh, uh, title. That ain't me up here. That's my brother up here already. So listen, <laughs> I am Marty Sellers, your mental hygienist, and we're so glad to have you. Listen, throw some shout outs. Where are you coming from tonight? Where are you coming from tonight? I know my sister Lisa's on there. So Lisa, get on your tablet and let me know you're on there or something, y'all. Hey, it is hot out here in Southern California. California. We then went through a, a, a pandemic. We then we then marched on the streets, and now we're dealing with the heat on the streets as well. We are so glad that you're joining us. Listen, uh, uh, we want to just welcome you again to another edition of Mental Health Matters with Marty here live from Southern California. We want I want to do this. June is men's uh, mental health, but it should June is men's health month. Uh, and mental health awareness in that as well. And we want to talk about men's issues tonight. We want to talk about men's issues. And y'all, let me know you're in the house. Uh, Miss Mildred, how are you, darling? Uh, good to see you out there. Listen, like and share. We want to get some men on here tonight because we got some real, look at my glasses, Crooked. We got some real men's issues to talk about tonight. And we want to welcome you in the room. Listen, like and share, like and share. All right, like and share. We're talking about men's issues, men's health awareness all month of June. And I'm so glad we're going to have lots of men on here. And we're going to just have real talk, real talk with men, real talk with men from all walks of life to um, in this time of sharing that Black Lives Matter. We want to hear what men have to say um, about all their. Lisa, glad that you're there. Listen, tell all the folks, come on in, come on in the room, come on in the room. Um, we are having a good time, y'all. And we want to listen. I want to do what I'm calling an oxygen check, y'all. How are you doing? How are you breathing? How are you living? With everything going on, we don't want you, again, what I always say all the time, we don't want you to suffer in silence in the shadow of shame, but we want you to speak up speak out and live, because that's the only way we can do this. We can no longer uh, keep silent about anything, but speak up. So y'all get on there. Listen, I'm so excited. I have not had either one of these gentlemen uh, on this show, and I'm so glad about it. First one, I've known him his whole life, and so glad to know this brother. He is none other than my own brother, none other than Bobby. What's going right. on, bro? Hey, what's happening with you? I'm good. How about yourself? Glad, hey, glad to be on the show, man. Thanks for man, the I'm glad to have you. Tell us about Bobby from the B-Side Podcast. The B-Side Podcast. Check us out on Instagram, the B-Side Podcast Q. Go to Instagram also, AR Sales too. Hey, AR Sales. What's AR Sales all about? Well, AR Sales 2. The letter two. two. I'm sorry, 2. Yeah, 2. Basically, you know, my own line, alecroberts.com, uh -huh. obviously. Uh -huh. And then uh -huh. just the AR Sales too, get it? AR sales too. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. Yes, yes. That's my yes. personal Instagram That's account, by the way. Gotcha. Jason T. Mahoney, how are you, my brother? Listen, y'all don't know. If you don't know, if you're trying to write something, get something out, listen, you need to get a hold of Jason T. Mahoney. He is a part of the team that I've signed with, Rain Productions, and my book will be coming out in September. So glad about it. And this, I'm so glad to introduce to you this another amazing brother uh, uh, who is, I'm going to say, my future brother-in-law, none other than the doc himself, Doc Daryl Cleveland, what's going on, Doc? What's going on, man? Thanks for having me. Man, we're so glad to have you. Now, we don't call you Doc just because you know how we go around in our community. What's up, Doc? What's going on, Doc? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> you you got an earn, Doc. <laughs> Absolutely. In other words, you earn sat the in the, you earned the hard way. You sat yeah. in the classroom, <laughs> you wrote the paper, you presented the thesis. You did so tell us what you do, Doc. What you do. Uh, so right now I'm an associate professor at Stockton University and I teach in school education and uh, Africana studies. Okay. Africana studies. Uh, I love it. I love it. So, so in this, um, let's have this conversation, y'all. Right. Um, June is uh, mental health, um, is, is men, men's awareness month. Uh, uh, why, why our sister got to shout this out? Look, Junior. What's uh, up? Tasha. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fam got the all <laughs> oh, <laughs> She don't get no hookup because she our sister. Off the air, bro. Oh, Off okay. The air. okay. 
<laughs> Yo, we just gonna have fun tonight. I don't have an agenda uh, because one of the things we we I think we fail to show in popular media today that we as black men we laugh. <laughs> We as black men, we have fun. Uh, we just not the angry black man that society likes to portray about us uh, uh, with that. And and so um, when you, when we talk about June being men's um, health awareness, um, let's just talk. What 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 do you guys? What do you think about Bobby? And then let's talk to uh, Doc after that. Men's uh, health awareness month. Um, I mean it's all good. I mean anytime we can definitely. Uh, shine a light on our uh, mental health issues going on yeah. in the black community, but not only that, but along with uh, us black males. Uh -huh. That's always a good thing because um, we need to shine a light on it, you know? No yeah. uh, no going around the corners, uh, no longer ignoring it, um, mm -hmm. and it's okay. I think right. we're in a safe place now where we can discuss some things. Yeah, yeah, y your mother said hi. <laughs> hey, what's up, mom? Hey. Doc, what, what about you? When we talk about June as being Men's Health uh, Month, what 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 comes to mind for you? Was it Men's Health Month, uh, uh, Men's Health Month, or Mental Health Month? It's actually Health Month because I okay. do mental health. I made it Mental Health okay. Month, but it's actually Men's Health Month. The whole gamut of it. Okay, yeah, because you talk about the whole gamut. Um, so now that I'm over the age of 50, um, and it's unfortunate, a lot of times as black men, we don't start taking our health seriously until right. we reach a certain point in our life. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like um, I have hypertension and mm -hmm. um, years I was non-compliant with my meds mm -hmm. um, and I lost one of my frat brothers. He had a stroke and he died. And oh wow, it, it took for him to pass away for me to get compliant with my medication. So, um, and since then I've been, you know, I take my med meds and um, you know, being hard headed, knuckle headed, whatever you want to call it. Um, don't take it serious. I say, you know, I'll lose the weight. I'll, I'll start eating right. And I won't need the medication work right, out. Right. But at the end of the day, um, I reached, a, I had reached that point where I need to take the medication on a regular basis, you know? Right. So, um, and in terms of uh, mental health, um, you, ever, you guys ever watch Sopranos? Yes, oh, yeah, of course. All right, oh, yeah. so remember Tony Soprano would have uh, anxiety attacks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I was having anxiety attacks, but I didn't know what they were. And then one day I was watching The Sopranos, and he was in his therapist's office, and he's talking about panic attacks. And I said, oh, that's what I have. So then when mm. I went there, I said, um, every now and then I have a panic attack. He said, I can give you some pills for it. I said, well, I know when it's coming on. I know what to do. But right. It's not that deep, but... Um, at that time, I didn't realize that I had a quote unquote mental health issue. It was a panic. Mm -hmm. it's a mental health issue, you know. Right. Um, I don't have them often, but when I have them, I know when they're coming on. I know I know what to do, you know. So, um, as men, um, we have to stop being so proud and seek the advice of medical professionals and get the help that we need so we can prolong our uh, stay on this place. Right. And I call right. it this place. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're right. Right. Doc, can, can I have you talk some more about that? Because a lot of times this over the past two weeks, I have been getting tons of calls from black men who are having just that panic attacks, having anxiety attacks with mm -hmm. everything that's going on and you recognizing mm -hmm. that and not being ashamed of that. So so talk to us more about um, what that looks like for you and in, in, in doing that. So for me, when I have a panic attack in my chest, mm -hmm. down to my stomach, and I feel very queasy, mm -hmm. and I'm coming on, and then um, I start sweating profusely, and um, I'll either pass out or I'll just have to lay down and let it run its course. And um, I know how to deal with it because I've I've been I'm 52 now. I've been having panic attacks probably since I was about 37, and um, Again, for the first maybe five years, I had no idea what it was. And I figured out what it was. I told my doctor. Um, but uh, I know what to do when it happens. Um, and the thing that brings them on is stress, stressful situations. And um, I've been fortunate that every time I've had a panic attack, I've been in uh, a safe space. Right. Well, with the, except, with the exception of one time. Um, actually, two years ago, I was flying back from 
Houston and mm -hmm. I felt a panic attack coming on and I know what to do. And I didn't listen to myself. I said, I don't know. Ah. Myself. Let me go into the bathroom. And when I tried to get up, the next thing you know, um, they were waking me up. I passed out. Mm -hmm. on the and so they had to, uh, once the airplane landed, uh, I had to be the first person out. The medical people had to come on and everything. And before they let me get on the flight, they had to make sure I was okay. Right, right. Man, Doc, thank you for sharing that because too often we don't. And I love what you said. You start paying attention to your body. Right. You start saying, wait a minute, I know this symptom. And 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 talk to me, y'all. Is this something that we fail to do? And why don't we listen to the triggers, the stressors that we have going on in our lives? Why, why do we feel the need to push past that maybe? I don't know. Bobby, what do you think about that? Um, I don't know. Just getting back, you know, what, what Doc was talking about. I mean, I definitely experienced panic attacks. I think I didn't catch on to that maybe later on. I would say probably in my 30s, probably. Um, okay. You know, I'm 46 right now. However, I, I know I was dealing with that kind of early in my life. But uh, right. picking up what you talk about as far as I think the first thing is just recognizing and just um, my whole thing, how I dealt with it is just try to put myself in the present, you know, um, mm. maybe, you know, as far as for me, maybe my anxiety attacks were coming on to think of far ahead. What I mean in the future, meaning right. that I need to be complacent right now in the present. And and what I usually do is just, just tell myself, yo, slow down, mm -hmm. take a couple of breaths, you know, Understand my whole my whole thing is uh, like you were saying. Understand my trigger. And let yes. Me, hey, I'm okay. Okay. <clears throat> Recognize where I'm at. Take deep breaths and just for me, just to proceed. That that's that's just how I, I normally do it. Obviously, everybody deals with it in a different manner. Yeah. But uh, you know, with anything, you you you, you got to find things that works best for you and apply yeah. it to yourself. Um, right. And uh, you know, and it helps just talking about it. You know. You know. I mean, I've. I've dealt with therapy, things like that. Um, and it helped just sometimes, you know, getting that third party right um, conversation can help you, you know? And I think a lot of times we just got to uh, identify it mm -hmm. and then set in a proper course. Some courses are longer than others. Depends on the person. Yeah. But my whole thing is just find, finding what works for you. Right, right. Lisa mm -hmm. talks, uh, you know, Lisa, our sister, yo, uh, fiance, yeah, says uh, the stigma of mental health prevents us um, to us to seek treatment. Um, and would you say that too? That that keeps us from uh, seeking treatment. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that, um, like Lisa said, it's a it's a stigma. There's yeah. a negative connotation uh, towards it. Um, I you know I worked in mental health for years. Um, and I worked in mental health uh, institutions and um, a lot of people in there who knew they had a problem, they still didn't want to seek treatment because of the negative connotation that comes with being quote unquote crazy. Right, right. No, uh, Dante on here says, man, I can relate to this. I've, I've had to remind myself to literally breathe sometimes um, with that. And I love what you guys said. Both of you said this. Um, I had to ground myself. I knew it was coming on. So uh, um, like Lisa was saying here, recognizing your triggers is major. So you recognize, okay, so this is about, I, this is familiar. Now, now, Doc, like men, we're like, okay, let whatever I do, just don't let me embarrass myself in front of these folks. You know how we go into mm -hmm. that. Okay, let me just kind of go into the little space because I don't want to pass out or anything like that. But, but definitely, mm -hmm. I love what both of you have said, getting grounded, living in the moment and not letting the moment overwhelm us um, in that. And whether it's taking breaths, whether it's just reminding yourself, I'm going to be OK, I'm going to be OK. Um, sure. and, and that's what we got to do um, sure. with that. Yeah. Yeah. Doc, talk to us some more. Hey, Marilyn, uh, uh, about um, you working at you said some psychiatric hospitals and, and these type of things. Tell us all, you know. Not only are you a teacher, but your your doctorate is in what it shares what your doctorate is in. So now education. Education. Okay. And you my, definitely um, my undergraduate degree is in African American studies and uh, my master's and my uh, doctorate is in uh, education. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. DJ, yes, this is good stuff, ain't it? Uh DJ's from Ohio too. Big All shout right. out to the big O. Uh with That's right. so so talk to me about when you were at the um the hospitals and, and what you saw and what are, how do we treat some of the um, P 
people like this um, that maybe we've, and, and even our misunderstanding about psychological disorders? Well, so uh, when I was an uh, undergrad um, and then after undergrad, I worked in a few uh, mental health institutions here in Philadelphia mm-hmm. uh, as a psychiatric technician. Um, and prior to that, I worked in a group home with uh, mentally challenged individuals. And, yes, uh, I'm that, still that, working that, at a group home. Yeah, that was actually my first experience. Um, and so from there, I went on to work in mental hospitals, drug and alcohol treatment, you know, combination of both and, um, you know, children's units, uh, mm-hmm. adult units. And um, I had a lot of different experiences. Um, mm-hmm. And I think geographically, it, 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 it may, may be different. Like um, what I noticed here in Philadelphia, when mm-hmm. it got really cold outside, all of a sudden you had a lot of people coming and saying they were homicidal and suicidal. Mm-hmm. Um, and when they say those trigger words, right. you have to admit them. But then as soon as it got warm outside, they wanted to leave and they would leave AMA, you know, well, so, temporary um, shelter and stay. Right. Um, and so I question a lot of uh, mental health back then because I saw that the system allowed people to take advantage of it, mm. um, um, especially with the drug and alcohol population. Right, right. Um, they would use it to their advantage so they wouldn't, get, uh, you know, go do this drug treatment so you don't go to jail, you know. Right, right, right really didn't want to be there, you know. Um, so I saw a lot of different things, but then working on the children's unit, um, I was probably more taken aback because now you have these young kids who have no choice to be here. But the sad thing was you had those children who were there because their parents wanted to go on vacation. Wow. And I don't think they realize the damage that you're doing to your child. Wow. So you 302 them, you go on vacation and you come back and get them. And they spent a week or two in this mental health facility um, and they didn't need to be there. Right. And um, I've seen I've wow. seen that a lot. Um, so so some children got free respite. Oh, and, and, and you'd be surprised, you know, um, or the kids that's in there. So they're, you know, um, so their children could be prescribed uh, at the time uh, Ritalin. Ritalin, because yeah. the parents wanted it for themselves. They didn't. The kid didn't need the Ritalin, but they wanted their kid to get on Ritalin. You know, I used to be a school teacher here in Philadelphia too, and I seen the same thing. You know, so seeing it from the academic level at the middle school level with kids, and then seeing it in the group homes and the mental health institutions. Um, there's a lot of things that we need to fix to, to make sure that people don't take advantage of it, specifically adults. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love that doc. Love that doc. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, no, I'm getting lots on this feed uh, on this line here talking about that. These a uh, lot of men um, and, and they're so glad that the two of you have talked about your own anxiety to attacks that you've had um, and everything. Mm-hmm. But let's talk about, about, you know, and you, you said this important thing too. Can we talk about, um, one of the problems I see when we're talking about now, we're talking about the disproportionate rate of uh, black men in prisons, especially when we're dealing with drug charges. I love what you said. They, they, they try to check themselves in there. So talk to me about, do we need more drug programs? How do we help our black men? Because I have one theory that, that a third, probably at least a third of those who are in prison are there because of untreated mental health diagnosis because they were self-medicating due to mm-hmm. marijuana. You know, and we have too many in there that's already on marijuana charges that that they should just let them out at this point in time. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. With that. So so now we then begin to 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 make them feel as if they're criminals because we've criminalized it. When, when they when they really needed mental health treatment or some sort of substance support program to help them through their mental health uh, issues with that. But yet now they come out with this label of drug trafficking in, in there when they're actually just needing mental health services into that. Uh, uh, t- talk to us some about that, what you guys think about that. 
Um, Good, but well, I would say, you know, I mean, we, we see the difference. Uh, you know, I, in my opinion, it's all like a, I don't know, program or setup. Because when the, 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 the cocaine, the crack epidemic was going on, it was mandatory sentences, right? Mm-hmm. Now we've seen the opioid epidemic. Yes. And what's the first thing they're saying? Oh, they need treatment. Right. They, you know, they need certain programs, you know, and, 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 you know, and then that's even, I think, another aspect on top of whatever charge or whatever mental aspect they're getting. Cause it's like, wait a minute. How am I getting all this time or in this situation when the European Americans, I like mm-hmm. to call them, they call it African Americans, the European right. Americans, European Americans, getting special treatment. Right. You know, I mean, right there, the whole the whole plan is messed up. You know, I think also we need to start all over with that type of program, too, with the mental health issue and also drug programs, too. Yeah. And a lot of what Seth is saying, she's a therapist out here in Southern California, brilliant young mind that's growing up. Absolutely. They need to learn more of how to respond to crises and trauma. But 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 that goes to. Uh, a thought of this. Why do we as men not have conversation? Women will get their girlfriends together, have their socials and everything, but we as men will not get together or or we don't share as openly. Why is that? Go ahead, Doc. Right. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, I, 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 I got my own opinion. We'll come That's back. Fine. Go ahead, yeah. Doc. I mean, you, you know, know, I think I, Marty. I think a lot of it is just uh, pride. You know, we don't want to talk about the issues that we have, and unless you're talking to somebody that's really close to you, but like you said, as a group of men, to sit down and have these open conversations about how we can better uh, care for ourselves and deal with these issues. Um, and a lot of these issues, you know, I mean, you know, Bobby, you talked about it, and we can go on and on and up about that, but you know, we have to look at the history of the prison industrial complex and the billion dollar business that it is, and uh, uh, you know, why they want to try to keep it open, um, a lot of these governors in the, around the country, they're a little resistant to legalizing marijuana. Yep. You know, um, well, but the, we legal the gov- here. <laughs> yeah, but the, gov- the governor in New Jersey, though, he said, if we're going to legalize marijuana, then we got to let all these folks go. Uh, That's the truth. Yeah, and I think every state needs to do that. If you're going to legalize it, then you need to let these folks out of jail because let's call it what it is. Marijuana? Come on, you really? Exactly. Right. Right. Uh, Dante, yeah. we have barbershops or where the, where the men folk hang out. And maybe well, we do you know, have some barbershop talks, Doc. We have barbershops and I, I, I do the cigar lounge, you know, so cigar lounge, barbershop, they all right. the same. It's a way to have conversations, but a lot of people still not going to really open up unless they really unless they're really uh, comfortable with you. Right, 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 right. And it, I and love it, this. Just going off the Doc, too, I think also. You know, I think as far as brothers, I think we have a lot of time um, open ourselves up to vulnerability, mm. you know, showing mm-hmm. our weaknesses because we see it, we've experienced it. Whenever we open up our weaknesses, somebody attacks us with it, uses it against yeah. us. Yeah. A lot of times, brothers won't open up until I think until you know it, it, it's like your immediate family, like me and you, uh, yeah. uh, or somebody close. But outside of that. Brothers ain't trying to express themselves or expose themselves because might be looked upon as weaknesses. And so, therefore, you got the brothers waiting to attack that. Now, as far as, sorry, say this, sisters and women, they ain't trying to hear our issues. They, mm. they, they're not trying to hear our problems because, you know, now we got to look at the women. If we go to the women, she's going to perceive us as weak, too. So it's like, damn, if you do, damn, if you don't. Because, honestly, maybe I'm wrong. Ain't no woman trying to hear no man's issues. That's just you, you know what, and, that, and that's all learned. You have to think about it. That's all learned behavior. Mm-hmm. As exactly. Boys, as boys growing up, uh, we were taught not to act like a girl. Up. Suck so it what up. You crying? You crying yeah. like a girl. Suck it up and, and and keep your problems in. Where girls are uh, expected to do that, boys are expected to be quote unquote strong. And you know, so if you cry, you're perceived as weak. Mm-hmm. You know, now crying as a child. Once you become an adult, now it becomes, you know, you're trying to express your views and your, your issues. And like you said, Bobby, uh, women don't want to hear that. Nah. Oh. <laughs> you, you know. Hey, hey yeah. well, again, how can I say it? Hey, we all know. You, <laughs> again, 
<laughs> but if you show that weakness to a woman, she will run all over you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right. To demasculate you. Plain because, and simple. You because know, the same thing she'll tell you. Tell you. That feeling Man up. fun of a woman. Right. Mm -hmm. And and, I mean, and that becomes a problem. You're absolutely I, I believe I'm right with you, Doc. It is learned behavior. Yeah, yeah. So I would I, I call it the, the soda can syndrome. So now you're suppressing all this stuff. Right. So the slightest thing, the slightest crack, we just get explode all over everything. My theory is this when you look at an angry black man, I believe you see a hurting black man. Uh, uh that that of nine chances out of ten, their anger. What, what we're seeing today, the anger and the riots is a result of, of black men and black voices that have gone unheard. They cracked. The pressure cooker exploded. Yeah. So, um, definitely. Yeah. And also with the anger, I mean, let's let's keep it real. The anger is nothing but fear. When you, when you mad at something, the anger, that's all another form of fear. Right. Whether Whether... How you bring it out, or whatever the case may be, but if you that anger is a lot to do with fear, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially now, you know, the fear yeah. of us getting pulled over by the police and yes. my yes. Baby guilt over a simple, a simple minor infraction where we got to worry about getting getting killed, and we've seen it time and time again. And like you said, that goes back to you know the pressure point in the can. It's going to. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa talks about says we as women need to uh, need education as well as uh, as well to support our men. We need to do Vice better. Person. Thank you. Thank you. Question. Mm -hmm. Really? Because we are still humans, all of us. We still have this thing called flesh and blood. We still have this thing called emotion. And we still have this thing called mental health. If we want to deal with, he have healthy relationships and healthy families, we got to deal with right where we're at. And too often, we, we don't have successful marriages and relationships because we fail to address the issues that's plaguing us that are... are <laughs> okay, go, go ahead. No, you know, go ahead. On that, go ahead. Come go on, ahead. Junior, give it to us, Bobby. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm done. Well, well, my opinion on that is why are we the only tribe? I don't want to say race because we're all one race, but why are right. we the only tribe as black folk competing with our women? We're the only ones competing. You, because you, don't, you don't see any of that in the other tribes. It's systemic. We had to compete. They kicked us out of the homes in the 70s because we were unemployed in order for our, our, our families to get 60s and 70s, in order for them to get food stamps or anything else, the man could not be in the home. So what did the man do? He left. So he had to compete. So now she's in there getting home. So she now feels empowered and says, saying, baby, we got this together. And then that's why we got this week. Mm, I'm trying not to make this a call. We've heard Swole. enough black women say. Swole. Swole. We got to understand yeah. You know, right, right. You know, I mean, you know, our apologies as male not leaving like we should leave it right women with these kids, but then at the same time, everybody got their role. Sorry, women, you just can't do everything, right? You, right, right. You can't do anything. Right. It's okay to be independent, but you, you can't do everything. Yes, Dr. Sutherland uh, says this uh, brothers appear at times, uh, lack elder, um, elder brothers in their lives, mentors, or giants who uh, shoulders they can stand on in order to elevate them and their family. Thank you so much, Doc. That's another amazing therapist uh, out there, y'all, uh, uh, with that. So, so let's talk what Doc was saying. Doc, I got to have you on the show too, uh, Doc Sutherland. So, so talk to me about that, uh, Doc Cleveland. What, what'd you think? Well, I actually agree with that. Um, yeah. I'm trying to remember exactly when it was. Um, I was maybe a freshman in college, but the question was posed, um, who was um, a positive male role model in your life? Um, I'm 19, 20 years old, and it's the first time I ever had to think about that question. And I thought about it. And up to that point, I never had a positive male role model in my life. Wow. Um, but I never thought about it. Right. Until it was posed to me. Like I was I was either a, a freshman or a sophomore in college. Right. And it hit me and it, it was like a, a, a gut punch because yeah. it was like <clears throat> all this life, the positive people in my life have been women, specifically my mother and my grandmother. Um never had a positive male role model. Uh and, and I didn't realize how much it affected me until later in life. And we uh I think Bobby 
talked about it earlier, the anger and the fear. Yeah. Uh, I was, uh, I'm still angry, black man. Um, I'm always going to be angry. But uh, I was very angry and, and radical back then. Um, and I didn't realize where this displaced anger and displaced aggression was coming from. Um, and, I, and I finally figured it out. I had to forgive my father. Uh, mm. Once I forgave him, I was able to uh, move forward and, and just have that load off my shoulder. Yeah. You know, but yeah. So um, that's good. Unfortunately, I don't think a lot of us as black boys think about the lack of positive male role models we have in our life. And I think it happens a lot more than we really think. Yeah. Th that goes with what, what Doc was saying here uh, about that. Just what we said, you know, we don't have the shoulders to shine. I believe part of our problem is we're constantly reinventing the, the same wheel. Yeah. Yeah, the exactly. wheel of 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 what defining what is a man what is a black man what yeah. is a man in our community uh, uh in that and and how do we do that if we don't have these shoulders and and i'm gonna say this a woman can't teach another man how to be a man they can help influence them certain point got a ceiling yeah yeah, yeah. but yeah. but 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 we need we and and Part of the problem, we need some, we need, we as men to stand up and, no and to do our part um, in that and talk about these issues, talk about our health, talk about, make sure we go there. You know, um, Bobby and I, we have a wise uh, grandfather we call Pops, you know, and, and, and <laughs> now, now Pops, God bless him. We love him to death. But, but, but what I, I will say this, Pops always steered us in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, with that, now he might work us to death. <laughs> That's a guarantee, <laughs> right? 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 But also, but, so, so do, do, you, do you think? Do you think that um, a single woman raising children um, can't raise uh, boys to be men? Can they? Yes. I'm asking for a reason. <laughs> Yeah. I, I believe that, yes, we, we have to, one. But right. I also believe that there are specific roles that are created for a man and specific roles that's created for a woman yeah. that are, are, are needed into the lives. And so, mm -hmm. as you're saying, you are at 19, realize mm -hmm. you didn't have a, a positive black or positive male role model in mm -hmm. your life. You know, Bobby and I, uh, we had different relationships with our father. Uh, mm -hmm. in that very different, you know, I, I, I thank God for my brother who I felt took the brunt of what I was out. I was like, deuces, I'm going to <laughs> peace. I'm going to college. I'm going to the other side of the country. Uh, but Bobby was, I wasn't the great hope. I couldn't play basketball like my daddy. Oh, come <laughs> on, man. Hey, I, hey, I hey. He did things he Except couldn't do. Except your brother. You know, you know, you can tone it down a little bit. <laughs> you can tone it down a little okay. bit. Because, okay. I mean, you know, I mean, how can I say it? You went a different route, like you said. Yeah. However, you athletic. Oh, I know that. You no know, question about that. And, and you hit the books hard, you know. So, um, you know, that that's that's good, too, you know. But I think also, just getting back to what we were talking about, also, uh, Doc's point, um, I think – you know, for youngsters and even some of us adults, go ahead and try to seek that uh, uh, inspiration as a male that you're looking yes. for. Yes. You know, um, I know that's that's what I try to do. I try to observe some of the older heads that were doing things that I was interested in. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, um, you know, you 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 had hustlers or whatever case may be out there, but you also had cats. You know, I should say walking the right way, but. They were going in a positive aspect too, and um, you know I think it's important to also go out there and seek those individuals too. You know it's okay to go up, strike a conversation with with, with some older guys. I mean um, that that's what I did. I mean a lot of guys you know mm -hmm. took me under their wing, but I think if I didn't approach them, that right. wouldn't happen. But it's okay to approach certain men, you know, who you think like, hey, you know, I I like their style, I like how they move it, to go up there and gain knowledge from them too. So, um, you know, at a certain point, you, you, you have to come to realization that, that you know, you can go ahead and seek that positive reinforcement, too. You know, I want to, you know, say that to, to the men out there, too, might be, might be listening. It's okay to do that. 
why is it that we can do that in sports? Like Michael Jordan went up to the people that he um, uh, went up to, uh, but but we don't want to do that in our personal lives. We'll do it in the sports world, but not in the personal world. Why is that more acceptable among men, especially black men? I can only speak for myself. Uh, when I was young, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, only I'm gonna be honest. I only went to college because everybody else in my high school was talking about going to college. I was like, oh, I guess I better take the SATs, you know. And um, I really had no interest in going to college, but then I did. And then I pledged my fraternity. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I stayed in school and finally finished. It took me 10 years to get my bachelor's degree. I wasn't prepared for college when I went, mm -hmm. you know, um, but it took me 10 years to get my bachelor's degree. Uh, but I had, again, I didn't really have any direction. My mother, uh, she prepared me and my brother to be responsible, if you will. Um, she put foot, to, can I curse? We, 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 yes. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, she put foot, to, she put foot to ass when it was necessary. Yes. Uh, she did it a lot. Um, she raised two boys by herself in public housing and she made sure that we wasn't going to go that wrong direction. Um, once we got a certain age, we still ventured out and did things we weren't supposed to do. But at the end of the day, she laid that foundation. But uh, all she cared about was she made it clear. Um, she said, you either got to go to college, get a job or go to the military. Military. Once you graduate from high school, um, you, you can't live here no more. Um, <laughs> yeah. We understand she, she told, that. That's how we were told yeah. too. Yeah. Right. Right and she told she told us that at a young age, and we learned from observation. When we were getting up to go to school, she was getting up to go to work, and mm -hmm. so we learned that you got to work. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I just think that uh, coming back to my original question, I asked if you if you think women can raise. Uh, boys to be men, I think my mother did a fantastic job of raising my brother and I to be men. She didn't want us to be like her brothers. Right. Um, my mother was very hard on us because she didn't want us to be like them. Because my grandmother was very hard on my mother, but she was soft on my uncles. My mother turned out to be responsible. My uncles turned out to be derelicts. Mm -hmm. And so I think my mother saw that. And so she took a different path and she was very hard on us. We became a certain age. Once we became teenagers, she she leveled off a lot, and she let us grow into ourselves. You yeah. Know? So uh, that's why I raised that question because I think my mother did a hell of a job raising two boys by herself in uh, the projects, and yeah. we both became very successful. And a lot of it had to do with um, just her being. I mean, uh, it was she was a dictator. Let's call yeah. it what it is. Yeah. You know, um, what she did. She had to ask you if she has. She had to tell you something more than once. It was a problem. And that's what Dr. Uh, Sutherland talks about here again, uh, Dr. Alvin Sutherland. You know, my mom would also, who is also Dr. Sutherland. Wow, what an uh, example to set, what challenge the notion of a woman can't raise uh, a boy to become a man. I'm, uh, I'm her data and and I am remarkable. I appreciate that uh, definitely. Can they? Yes. Uh, so, so uh, mm -hmm. correction. Yes, because, <laughs> yes, because Marty, I mean, let's, let's, let's be honest. I mean, basically, yeah. Um, yeah. raised you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you're yeah. talking about that. But I think I think also the point is, once again, it's always better with the man and the female raising the kid. I mean, nothing, I, against, nothing against the ones who no. raise them separately because Pops right. raised me. However, I'm sure I could have used that woman womanly approach, you know, for my mother more. Not My mom did a hell of a job, too. I'm just saying as far as being right there. So, I mean, right. it, 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 it can get kind of sensitive for some people when, when we bring at that point. It's okay. However, yeah, no, I yeah. believe is it helps when both parents are there. Most definitely. And I think we're, we're, because we're products of that where, where when our parents uh, uh, divorced and all that, I came to California with my mom. Bobby stayed in, in Ohio with my dad. So uh, with that, we, we, we did that for a while. So, you know, what happens with that? Yeah. Uh, and I think, like he said, he longed for having some more of mom in his in his life to do some things to, just to be there. Where I also long for my dad to be in my life and those things as well. But uh, we, we made it out, right? Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. sir.
So, uh, uh, yes, and even what Dr. Southern says, two are, are better than one. You yeah. are absolutely right. Yeah. Two are definitely better than yeah. one. That's but all. yeah, but when you don't uh, 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 don't have what it, you know, either one of that, you you we take what we have and make the best out of it um, with that. So with that, so moving mm -hmm. on about some more about men's uh, men's health month. What what message do you want to give to men today? Uh, 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 and I say this since we're all three black men in here. What message do you want to give to specifically black men today? Doc, what you got to say? Go to the doctor. <laughs> yeah. 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 Make, make, make your appointments. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, if the medication that they prescribe at first is not working, tell them. Tell them. Else. Uh, don't just stop taking it, you know, uh, go to the doctor and just be compliant. And again, it took me years to get to that point. Um, and it took my frat brother to pass away for me to wow, find, yeah. okay, uh, I need to get on this, you know? So um, go to the doctor and be compliant. I mean, that's the bottom line. Uh, uh, now, one of my, uh, one of my good buddies, he's a medical doctor and I was explaining to him uh, every I go to my doctor every six months and before I go, I have to get blood work done. And so I just assumed everybody did that. And he said, no, you just have good insurance. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> he said, you have good insurance. He said, everybody don't do that. He said, but your doctor looked at your insurance and said, oh, okay, I can do this to make sure his kidneys and his liver is not being affected by the medication. So uh, I feel like that uh, I am very fortunate to have good insurance and to have a doctor who recognizes that and uh, uses it to my advantage, not to his advantage. He uses it to my advantage. I get blood work done. You want to make sure my kidneys and my liver is right. All functioning. Yeah. Medication is not uh, uh, messing with it. And so um, use the doctors to your advantage to prolong your life and your mental health. You know, um, and my doctor, he offered, I told him, I said, I have anxiety attacks sometimes. He said, well, if you want, I give you a pill, some pills for it. And when you feel it coming on, you take the pills. I said, no, I know what to do when it come on. You right, know, right. Maybe I should get them, but I don't think I need them at this point. You know, but but that's good I, that I, you know. Think, yeah, no, so that's good that you know your own self that that at least that that is a viable option for you. Right. If they get too bad, you can always go back to your doctor and build right. that. And I love that you have the relationship because many of us don't have relationship with uh, with our doctors. Uh, I've had the same doctor for about almost 20 years now, and he had the nerve to tell me he was talking about retiring. I said, well, doc, I'm coming to your house because I ain't got time to break in another one. Listen, <laughs> I know your kids. You don't mind. Uh <laughs> <laughs> no question. I, I would say just copying off doc. Definitely get 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 checked out. Go to doc. Get tested for everything, fellas. Yes. Mm -hmm. Get the blood work on everything. Everything. HIV. Uh, uh, STDs get tested for everything, you know, mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, just me personally, get the female doctors. I just think just me personally, the female doctors are, they'll be a little bit more straight up than the fellas. I think the fellas sometimes really? I'm just me. I go with the female doc, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. Physicalness. Sorry. No, that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> no doc, no <laughs> female doctors. <laughs> okay, let's talk about this. <laughs> Only my brother. That's why I love him. Okay. Back on the regular note. Definitely get everything tested, checked out, eat properly, get proper exercise, right? Mm -hmm. And and don't abuse the alcohol and the trees and the cigarettes. Don't abuse them. Don't, don't, don't abuse the alcohols, the trees, and the and cigarettes. cigarettes. Okay. Just, just don't abuse it, you know. Moderation, fellas. You know, you, you ain't got to drink the whole pint or the whole fifth. Just a couple <laughs> sips to the back, you know, beer to the new cut. <laughs> <laughs> you know, your Friday night ain't got to be a Monday night. You know what I'm saying? Moderation right. is the key. And water. Right. Drink a lot of water. Yeah. Now, that's one thing I do. I drink, I try to drink a gallon of water a day. Yes. Wake up in the morning, I drink four bottles of water. That's a half a gallon right there. And I drink water throughout the day. But I will admit, um, I'm an avid cigar smoker. I smoke cigars. And because of this COVID-19 and being home all the time, seven days a week, 24 hours a day, uh, my cigar smoking has increased. Um, I know I need to slow down. <laughs> Here's down, a, break it down and not down. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, and I'm not working out because the gyms are closed. And um, I work 
prior to this, I worked out four to five days a week. Now that the gyms are closed, I haven't been working out and I've been smoking more cigars. So uh, I hear you, Lisa. There's exercise yeah. apps, Doc. There's exercise apps. Home, there is. Home, home exercise. <laughs> There's enough apps out there, Doc. I know. You know yeah. There's enough apps. I know. I've been getting my little, I've been walking, man. You know. Hey. At 53, I've got to get rid of this uh, 30 COVID pounds. You know, especially with this COVID right going yes. on right now. We yes. got to work on our immune system. Yeah. Yes, that's it. I mean, say, I mean, it. Well, say it. We got to now that I'm 52, now that I'm 52, I, I met this new guy in my life, um, Arthur Itis. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he's... Uh, <laughs> I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, you know. So uh, every now no and then, joke. <laughs> every now and then, my ankle was bothering me, and I'm like, ankle bothered me. I didn't bump it or nothing, and I had to <laughs> accept the fact that arthritis is uh, real. You know, so um, I'm I'm starting to accept my body for what it is, uh, but I'm still going to work out and do what I need to do. Yeah. Um, so excuses, but I can't wait till the gym open back up. And the thing is, I hate working out. Only did it for my health yeah. and to let's call it what it is, look good. But uh, uh, I can't wait for the gym to open back up. I feel like I'm blo- I've been working out for like 12 years. Yeah. Now to not work out at all, yeah. I miss it. And I never got a challenge on here. I, I never thought I would say that. Yeah. Oh, I get you, man, because uh, you know I've been a uh, avid uh how can i say endorser of 24-hour fitness and now they talk about you know obviously because of covid you got to make a right. ah it's rough but hey you got to fit it in Plain right and yeah. right and, and, you know exercise that helps you with stress you know helps out you yeah. know with your overall mentals and, yeah uh, yeah that's something we got to incorporate in our life no question Yes, yeah. yes, yes, definitely. Uh, with that, but you, but you said something, you know, and, and let me go back to this. You know, I, I, I'm on a weekly show with um, Doc um, Christy, uh, Donovan Christy down in, in Atlanta, and he's a uh, MD down there. And we talk about with, with the effects of COVID 19 and how it's affected our black communities much more when you're looking at the disproportionate rates that is affecting us. If we're one third of the um, deaths that have happened, and yet we only make up 12% of the population in the country, there is a disproportionate rate of us dying from this. And it's all mm-hmm. because of our health, because of our diabetes because of our blood pressure, because of our uh, our immune mm-hmm. systems being down. There is a cry that we as men, as black people, as a black men, have to do a better job of taking care of ourselves physically and mentally because there's a direct correlation with that. A lot of times we don't look at the um, integrativeness of what our physical health and how it feeds into our mental health and our mental health, how it feeds into our physical health as well. That's why the walking so can release the anxiety and stress, the biking, whatever you need to do. Uh, uh, alcohol is a depressant. So we got to make sure that we are not, like you said, do it in moderation um, in mm. that and how we can do that. What do you have to say, Doc, you know, um, uh, even about as we're seeing this, speaking to our health and covid and still being cautious, you know, they're slowly opening up the states back up. And 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 listen, I got I got so many masks, it's ridiculous. I go in the bathroom, I got a mask. I go uh, uh to the backyard, I got a mask. Euros uh, ain't wearing a mask, huh? The Euros are not wearing masks. <laughs> okay, I'm just saying, I, I, but, but it ain't just a Euro. It, I just seen the Blick folk not wear them too. And they, and they don't have their children. I'm like, put a mask on that kid. Yeah, all I'm saying is <laughs> Americans they ain't wearing it. Well, I think yeah. I, yeah. Well, you know, um, so they haven't totally opened up Pennsylvania yet or Philadelphia yet, I should say. And even when they do, I'm taking another 30 days. I hear I'm you. Not ready to be around large crowds. Um, right. Every now and then, my boy will come over here. We'll sit on the porch and smoke a cigar. I'll go over to his house. We'll smoke a cigar. But it's just the two of us. Right. Or sometimes us, because, you know, uh, Lisa, she smokes too. But um, I'm just not ready to be around. As a matter of fact, my cigar buddies, last Sunday, um, they had a big event out at the park. Now, they said they were social distancing. and everything, But he called me and said, you coming? I said, no. He said, I said, listen, they haven't opened up the city yet. And even when they do, I'm taking another 30 days. Like, I'm just not ready. 
I'm I'm ready to be agoraphobic for the next six months. <laughs> <laughs> That's That's six months. months. <laughs> I mean, you know, and it's kind of the truth. We we can't open our lanes up, meaning going out here in public like everybody else. You know, yeah. I, I, I we can't. We have to we have to be a little bit more cautious of, of, of where we're going, you know. And fellas, we gotta stop the pub puff acid, you know, which is a good thing. Which is a good thing. We we you know mm-hmm. that, that that helps on the game. As far as no more pup pup passing, and also it kind of helps on the kissing game. You ain't got to kiss as much. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But there, there's still there, there's still of us are romantic out here. Okay, but that's all. <laughs> so if I'm gonna get this straight for men's health month, no pup pup pass. Hey, I'm just saying. Hey, that's hey hey hey. I'm not, I, yeah, I'm not puff, fellas, you puff, know. Puff, 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 you better get your own. Exactly. <laughs> ain't none of that, you know. You know, okay. ain't, that. ain't no, ain't no passing the bottle, none of that. I'm saying, keep yeah. maintaining your own. But you know, mm. just on, 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 on the real though, you know, um, we just got to be cautious, you know, because yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, like Doc said, just because they're opening it up, that don't mean it's all good for us. We know why they open it up because they want the money coming in. You know, mm-hmm. okay. and then, you know, and then out here, you know how it is in California. They was tripping because they can't go out eat to the restaurant. Makes no sense right now. Makes no sense. Yeah. Or, or hang out the bars. Makes no sense right now. Yeah. Can we address one last final issue before we go? A lot of times we, when I, when I think of of health, I don't just think about now physical health and mental health. What about our financial health? Go ahead, Doc. <laughs> Woo! Okay. So, um, what about you know, our financial health? This is a, you know what? This is a serious conversation and a generational conversation. Yes. I, I grew up poor, and okay. I was never taught how to save money because we didn't have any money to save. Right. Um, uh, we were taught that when you get money, you spend money. Mm. Um, and when I say we were taught um, in a community I grew up in, mm. when people got money. They spent it as soon as they we, got it. We blew it. Uh, for so again, I grew up poor, so there were many Christmases that we didn't get anything for Christmas. Our Christmas was uh, in March when my mother got her income tax check. Right, right, right. So when she got that income tax check, again, as soon as she got the check, she spent it and it was gone. Um, so I was never really taught how to save money until later in life. Um, I'm fortunate in that. Uh, where I came from to where I am now, um, I've done well for myself, but I still have issues with saving money. Um, I have a good 401k plan. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate with that. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I've invested in a very large, I've been collecting art for over 20 years. So I have that. Um, but just in terms of saving money, I'm not there yet. And I know that's a problem to be in my fifties and not, you know, and I think it's a learned behavior. We're just not taught Mm -hmm. how to uh, put funds away for a rainy day or to put funds away. You know what? I take that back. When it was time for me to buy my house, I buckled down and I saved $20,000 in three months. You know, I could do it, but I had to be motivated. Disciplined. Yeah. Motivated. Yeah. Long term. Long term, you don't think long term, um, and and I hate to say it, my thinking is because uh, once I'm gone, I'm gone. So, who's gonna get my money? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 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 Mart. I mean, that, I think that's definitely an important thing. Right, uh, right. We we we, we got to train ourselves to uh, think better in terms of financial uh, aspects in our lives. Yeah. Um, Right now, I mean, uh, I would say probably past few years or so, I'm, I'm trying to incorporate the, the I call it the, the 50 30 20 rule. You know, um, you know, basically, you know, 50 percent of your money, you handle your bills, whatever the case may be, your 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 necessities. Thirty mm-hmm. percent, you know, whatever you need to do as far as you know, getting clothes or take yourself out or going to movies, whatever the case may be, and then try to save twenty percent of your income because there's going to be rainy days. There's no mm, question right. about that. You know, we're in it right now, the pandemic. Who would have thought all this job loss? Right, mm-hmm. right. That's the main thing. And many people right. weren't prepared for it. Yes. And 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 and, and there's, there's there's 
do your research. There's plenty of apps out on here. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm with the Acorn app. You know, mm-hmm. I was listening to uh, uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins, and um, <clears throat> you know, just listen to him. For instance, the, the, the he, like he calls it the the five five dollar day plan on savings. You know, as far as sign up with Acorn, and you can save money that way. Also, I mean, it will uh, uh, show you investment because invest your money and then uh, uh, to build up your portfolio. But I think a lot of times we just need to bear down, do the research on our financial needs. That's, but it's very important because money is emotional. Money, money is, is emotional. Extremely emotional. Extremely you know? emotional. Yeah. You don't have no money, you out here tripping. And with no money, you don't get no money. <laughs> no money. No money. <laughs> because that's real talk. No woman wants to mess with no broke dude. Sorry. Sorry. No money. No honey. That's financial <laughs> advice out there. That's financial hey, advice know, out there. Hey, 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 you know, hey, it's part of it. But I'm saying, <laughs> no money, no honey. <laughs> but 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 definitely, hey, just thank you for your wisdom. There's a Robin Hood app. There's a lot of apps out here right. that you can uh, start and look up and do things yourself. Even if you got to go to uh, Yahoo Finance and put in a couple stocks so that you can watch and you can research that information. I mean, there's ways out here. We just got to stop being lazy. Excellent, mm-hmm. excellent, excellent. Uh, your mom said, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> you brought me into this world, baby. <laughs> Mama B, you brought me in this world, baby. I'm just, I'm just an uh, uh, example or offspring of you. I love you too. <laughs> She says, let your haters be your motivators. Uh, well, <laughs> you, need to, you need a hater. Like, 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 like my man said, Cat Williams, you ain't got no haters. Get a couple in your life. Motivation. <laughs> they, that's what they're there for, to hate. Let them be there. Let them be there. Listen, I want to thank y'all for listening. This was good. This was good. Listen, we you never know what we're going to get with mental, mental health battles with Marty. Listen, I, uh, Doc, Brother-in-law, thank you yes. much, much. Uh, Bobby, as always, much yeah. love, brother. Yeah, I gotta uh, have you brothers on my show too. The Beast yes. podcast, no question. Yeah. Most definitely. What, what, most one more point, please, please. Uh, we were talking about money. Yes, let's spending it in black business. There we go. Hey, there you go. There we go. That's true. That is true. The dollar on the circle. Our dollars on the circle are like six hours in the community. We're better wow. than that. We're way better than that. Yeah, and and since we're saying that, let's I say, listen, we have to make an effort to continue to support and go out of our way to to, to circulate and cycle, recycle those black dollars. Listen, right. we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. I now have made a point. If I don't get the the service or quality I want, I'm I'm going to let you know. I'm going to say I'm going to continue to support you. But this is what I'm having a problem with. We we, we do that for everyone else uh, in that, but but doing that for our own, we got to make sure we're doing that for. Hey, our own. hey, before we get out of here, Marty. What yes, was sir. The bank, man, what's the black bank, man? Is it, I, I, I always mess up. One United Bank, bank you, bank One United, One United, One, bank, one United, One United Bank. That's a black bank. Everybody, you can go online and set up an account. We have mm-hmm. to promote them. We have to promote our financial institutions. I'm sure there's some other black banks out there, but the one that I'm with, one United Bank, we have to support. We have to support our own financial institution. Yes, yes. I love that, y'all. Listen, listen. I am so grateful. Keith, you made it on. Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, Dr. Sutherland says in here, listen, keep it in the black community for the longevity of the black. That's right, uh, Dr. Sutherland. We appreciate you. Listen, y'all, we, I, I thank y'all. Sometimes we just need to have conversations with our brothers. And this has truly been with my brother and my my, my brother. Yes, huh. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, y'all, yeah. y'all know growing up, my our house was uh, always Comedy Central. Uh, in and that. you have your skin. No question. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, you gotta have real tough skin yeah, to yeah, survive yeah. in our family. Yeah. Listen, as always, uh, I want to thank everyone. Thank you both for coming out and just hanging out with us. 
with me today uh, with that. Again, you can catch us on marcelconsulting.com. And, and with that, uh, uh, check out my mental health podcast every uh, Wednesday. It drops Mental Health Matters with Marty podcast on Apple, uh, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, iRadio. And uh, we, we're so excited about that. You can also check out, again, Bobby has his B-side uh, uh, podcast as well. And That's again, right. if you want to stay in tune and say what's going on, text I matter to 31996. Again, text I matter to 31996 as we continue to get updates. Listen, we don't want you to suffer in silence, but we have to stop the negative stigma as it pertains to mental health. And as always, we want you to speak up speak out and live. Listen, love you guys. I appreciate you. Until next time, we will see you uh, again. We'll see you uh, this coming Tuesday. I'm so excited. I got a young, um, he is a doctor. No, no, I'm sorry. Almost doctor. Uh, Jabari Dotson coming out of Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, 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 Lisa, I might have you on there too. He's a psychiatric nurse uh, coming out of Atlanta, the Mecca of the South. Uh, Atlanta. Atlanta and Atl Mecca. <laughs> the Mecca. Atlanta is the Mecca of the South. But again, until next time, y'all, I appreciate you. Until next time, listen, speak up, speak out, and live. Enjoy, enjoy.